Good afternoon, friends. I'm Holly, and I'm back, and um, this is where we talk about the ones that we've loved and lost from the entertainment world. So if you like what you're hearing, please hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and the like button. So today I'm going to talk about Brittany Murphy. Um, she is somebody that um, I really can't say that I knew a whole lot about her. My uh, daughter did, and she's the one that wanted me to do her. So um, this is for you, darling. Um, Brittany was um, born on November 10th, 1977, and she passed away December 20th, 2009, which I cannot believe how many people I've done that have died in 2009. What is with 2009? I'm gonna go back and count someday. I, I, I really, it, I feel like I say 2009 a lot. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like, it feels like I say it a lot. But anyways, um, Brittany's official autopsy came back as being that she passed away from uh, pneumonia and uh, anemia, iron deficiency, and um, a uh, significant amount of um, prescription pain medication uh, drug they called it multiple drug intoxication I'm sorry about my eye um, so here's the thing folks I, I should change the name of my show to, here's the thing folks I say that a lot and I apologize <laughs> but so here's the thing folks um, her husband, she was married to a man by the name of Simon um, Mojack, I believe is how you say his name. And he was looking very suspicious in the beginning for her, her death. And I'll tell you why later. But he was found dead five months later in the same room of the same home by the mom. I'm so sorry, I have something in my eye. Um, and he, his death was the exact cause that Brittany had. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Um, now, Brittany's father started pushing for um, more investigation into their deaths because he felt like they were murdered um, by poisoning. Because they found significant amounts of high levels of metal in Brittany's hair. And that's a form of poisoning. I don't know how, but what? anyways, so he was pushing for that and he's still pushing to have her body exhumed. So we shall see. Um, now she was supposed to, right before she died, she was supposed to play my favorite in a, a biopic movie. Um, Janet Stoplin, which I think she would have been perfect after looking at pictures of her. Um, and she beat out Courtney Love. I mean, believe that. But there was an issue. It's been tabled or set aside because um, there was an issue with uh, the rights to the music. So, yeah. Um, 
But again, here's the thing, Scott. Here's the thing, guys. <laughs> Brittany Murphy bought this home from Britney Spears. Now, let me tell you about the home, according to Britney Spears. Britney Spears had this big party one night. And right after this party, she started, you know, thinking, you know, it's not feeling right, you know. So she had this friend of hers that practiced Reiki. And Reiki, for any of you that don't know, is a healing um, that uh, in this for energy um, technique that is supposed to promote relaxation and reduce uh, stress and anxiety and through touch. Sure it is. <laughs> anyway, so she had this friend of hers come over and do this. I'm not, I'm not making fun of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> she had this person come over and do this. Okay. Now, Brittany was on a podcast now, I don't know. I think she was on this after this, after the death of Brittany Murphy. But Brittany Spears was on this podcast. And she said that after this person did this healing on her, that she swears to God that this person opened a portal in that home. Now, if you're going to be open up portal, you got to close it. Idiots. <laughs> so, basically, if you open a portal, you're opening up something to where spirits can come out. Okay? You all seen the poltergeist, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's what Britney Spears claims. And then she had an incident happen. She was by herself in the home, and she was walking down the, st down the stairs, and she felt something push her, try to push her down the stairs. Well, it scared her so bad that she packed a bag, and she left. And she never went back since. Put that thing up for sale and didn't look twice. And Brittany Murphy comes along and purchases it with all of the furnishings. And I think you have to disclose any kind of crap like that. In fact, they know you do. Um, unless it's regulated state to state. I don't know. But... I'm pretty sure that you have to disclose if there's a haunting or if there's something like that going on. So I would be shocked to find out that Brittany uh, Murphy didn't know about this. Well, she did because I read that she made a claim that she never did really see any spirits or anything weird like that or feel anything other than she said there was something off about the house something was weird about it something wasn't right and she would beg simon she would plead with him to not take them home to have them stay at the beverly hills hotel she would plead with him how sad is that oh my god and he would say no you know, let's just go home. You know, any this year that we're moving to you to New York, because that's what he told her. He was making plans for them to move to New York, and so she would go home, and she hated it. Poor thing. So Mo. Mojack, or Simon, he, 
I didn't find anything, but apparently he had a criminal history. And he had an ex-girlfriend who had his child. And Brittany didn't know about it. No, she did not. And this girlfriend would tell people or tell reporters after he passed that his uh, behaviors, criminal behaviors and his uh, abuse, abusive behaviors that I'm going to tell you about here in just a second are correct. Absolutely 100% correct. Because while he was married to Murphy, he fired her agent, her manager, and her makeup artist. And he decided to do all three of them himself. Okay, weirdo. Really? <laughs> he disconnected all of her phone lines. He removed her from all of her friends. You had to go through him to see her. She couldn't just, you know, go off and have her friend day with her friends. Her, she, had, she had to go through him first. He was a serious control freak, serious control freak. And yeah, and the ex-girlfriend backed all that up, backed it all up. She said, he, yeah, that's absolutely correct. That sounds just like him. Now, had he not have died, he really would be answering to something, wouldn't he? So, yeah, Murphy was fired from her last uh, movie that she was in um, because he showed up inebriated, either high on something or drunk. I don't know. But she was fired because of it. So, way to go, manager. So, in Murphy's will, she left everything to Sharon, her mom. And once uh, Mojack died, Sharon discovered that all of the jewelry was fake. Hmm. I wonder how that feels. Um, yeah. So, he also took control of Murphy's assets, all of her assets, and made fake property deeds. How do you do that? And someone teach me. <laughs> oh my God. How? How do you do that? <laughs> I mean, in this day and age, I mean, because this is what, 2009? <laughs> I guess we are in 2022. <laughs> That's been kind of quite a while ago. But, you know, God dang. And he convinced poor Brittany and Sharon that he was investing all the, their money in good investments and, um, doing the right thing by them financially. And she had nothing, nothing. So once again, when she died, she was just flat out in debt and broke. So sad, so, so sad. So yeah, I, I didn't get to find out much answers. I did find out that Sharon did sell the home and she got two million for it, a little, little over two million. Um, the owners that bought the home demolished it and rebuilt it, rebuilt a home on the property and sold it for over 14 million, which 
not a bad um, profit there. Um, but, you know, um, yeah, she didn't get much. And that's just really sad. Really, really sad. I do feel bad for that family. Because uh, Brittany, she was in, she was just a baby. She was only like 32, I think. And she, she was, she would have been something, you know. She would have really probably been very, very good. Very good. From what I could tell. Yeah. She's beautiful. She'd have made a great chess job. <laughs> was telling you guys that I was going to do a piece on James Dean and if you guys want me to please somebody comment but um I'm not really finding anything great the only thing that I could find was that he was actually ticketed for speeding right before he crashed found that interesting and that the passenger uh lived that he had with him because have y'all seen the pictures I can't believe anybody did and um, there was a, it was a car that, that actually hit them so it sounds like so I mean I could dig deeper I suppose but um, I don't know I mean he just he was a little guy <laughs> and um, there just wasn't really much of that I was really fascinated by and maybe that's why they put he he's always in pictures with Marilyn and Elvis because they want him to be <laughs> because he didn't know either one of them <laughs> he didn't I, I did find out this he was in a movie with Reagan Ronald Reagan and Ronald Reagan got pissed off all the time, would get pissed off all the time because he would ad lib stuff. Isn't that funny? Because Reagan would, you know, stay with the script, but James Dean was always putting in little ad libs here and there, and it would piss Reagan off. <laughs> I did find that cute. But, anyways, so thanks for tuning in. And um, like I said, this is where we talk about the ones that we've loved and lost. And um, we'll see if I change the name or not. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> I do say that a lot. <laughs> so here's the thing, folks. <laughs> so yeah, so if you like what you're hearing, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and the like button. And I hope to be talking with you all soon. So you guys have a great rest of your day and night. Talk to you soon.